Okay, we're live. One hour early, I know, so tell your friends. Hour earlier, Marilee is going to attempt to come on at six. She's going to be off location, so you never know with Wi-Fi, but she has a super inspirational message for y'all that I prayed, was praying for you, and I asked for God for a message for you, and he gave me that message, and actually, Marilee and I read it together, and she said, oh my gosh, this is probably, I said, yep, that's why I prayed for that, so she's going to bring that message in an hour from now, but I want to go over this target ratio because this is really important, especially where you are right now in the fast. This now applies. So I want to review one of the past videos. I talked about the target ratio. I give uh, Thomas Seyfried, the, the uh, writer, the author of Cancer as a Metabolic Disease credit for me figuring this out. We use it differently uh, than Thomas, but needless to say, it's the same principle. He found this out when they were fasting and putting people in ketosis, etc., for cancer, tumors, that at a certain ratio of glucose and ketones, so we're going to look at both of those, at a certain ratio, the tumors would continue to shrink aggressively. When they got outside of that ratio, they would notice that it would slow or stop. So this ratio becomes uh, a way of at least knowing that we are approaching or at maximum autophagy. So I think the ratio is really at least a one-to-one -one ratio of glucose and ketones, meaning that if you go further than the ratio, I believe you're going to get even more autophagy. Um, however, we want to obtain at least this one-to-one -one ratio for max autophagy of glucose and ketones. So these actually were my real numbers today down here, but let's look at an example first. So again, if you didn't get your Keto Mojo, shame on you, but it's getketomojo.com, and we can look at our beta hydroxybutyrate. And with that, I reviewed this last time, so I'm not gonna review it too much, but with one prick of the, the finger, same drop of blood, we can measure our glucose and then our ketones or vice versa. But either way, we have both numbers. I like to get the first morning numbers because they're fresh. Even though your ketones will typically rise during the day, that gives us a starting point um, that's kind of clean and we can do it the same. We don't, we're not worried about stresses, we're not worried about exercise, and obviously we're not worried about food. Okay, but this is the ratio. So glucose, if your glucose is 80, you have to divide by 18 to get the European equivalent. So we're actually comparing apples to apples, so to speak. So if we are 80, divide your glucose by 18, get that number, and in this case we would have 4.4 to 2 ratio. So you're not there, right? You can tell you're not there because your glucose is up. Your ketones are really good because remember to be in ketosis, anything above 0.5, you're in ketosis. So that's pretty good. However, you're not obtaining full autophagy, what we want. Why? Because your glucose definitely is too high in this case. All right, now look at my numbers today. Day three, I crossed over into this target ratio. My glucose was 65 this morning, divided by 18, 3.6. My ketones were 3.8. So 3.6 to 3.8 is actually a little better than the one-to-one -one ratio. So if my glucose was 70, I would be about 3.8 to 3.8. So I could have, because my ketones were already 3.6, even at 70, I was still hitting the one-to-one -one ratio. So pretty cool. Um, that I'm already there. Many of you, I'm sure, are already there as well. Many of you may not be there till tomorrow, maybe not even till Friday. Again, that's the benefit of being fat adapted earlier, um, intermittent fasting earlier, uh, doing the fast days earlier, because chances of hitting this target ratio are that much greater. Why is that even important? Because if we know that we're getting more autophagy, we're producing more what? Stem cells. I hope you all said it in unison. You know, I mean, when you look at this work, and I'm doing a lot of research uh, right now on this area of stem cells because I'm writing a book about it, and I'll tell you, it, it is really the key to preventing age-related diseases. Uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, arthritis, right? I mean, we get older and we start not being able to do things we love to do. Believe me, that's a big motivator for me. Um, you know, I mean, I can go to heart disease, cancer. I mean, all of those are considered age-related diseases. 
And so you may live longer, but the key is, is I don't care to live longer if I can't do the things I love to do, right? Play with my kids. Uh, me playing with my kids, I'm talking about hardcore skiing, <laughs> mountain biking. That's what I call playing. Uh, and of course, their kids, uh, that is ultimately my goal. But my point is this, you're not going to do it unless you're maximizing these stem cells. Because when we look at these studies, and I've been through them, uh, it's really as we age, we start lacking the stem cells and viable stem cells that are able to heal when we're injured, heal just from you know daily abuse, if you will, uh, heal from different things. So as the stem cells get lower and lower, we start aging very rapidly. Um, you know, I would encourage you to all take a tell a years test. And what that is, is it's kind of fun. I, I mean, I, you could do it after this fast just to see where you are. But um, I don't draw this very well, but I'm going to attempt to draw it very well. So if this is your chromosomes, believe it or not, that's not bad for me. That's chromosomes. Um, <laughs> at the end of every one of your chromosomes, you have these things called, these are actually measuring bases, but here is our telomeres. And our telomeres are a biological clock. It's the only biological clock that we know of. When upon conception, you have about 15,000 bases, and that's how they're measured in bases. So imagine like measuring this in these bases. So, and then by the time you're born, this is kind of sad actually, you go through so much cell division from conception to you're born, you're actually down to about 10,000 measurable bases. Now imagine this, so on the end of every one of these chromosomes, it, you think of like the plastic little lace on your shoelace, it's there to keep your uh, shoelaces together. So imagine these telomeres as being there to keep your chromosomes together, right? But it probably has far more greater purposes than that because it does. It, it is a great measure of how long we're living at our cellular age. So by measuring these bases, you're actually able to measure your cellular age. So for example, you may be 50, but your cellular age, you know, hopefully is around 30. So you know that's the key here. So uh, the stuff that I'm teaching you really applies here, you know, into these tele years. But here's the point, though. You're at 10,000 when you get around. 5,000 bases, you actually are really close to death. So from here to here is your life. <laughs> so when we measure these, we want to know where we are on this progress. You know, the, and the reason this is cool, and you can do this test actually for like, I, I think like $120, maybe $100 if you get it on special, but teleyears.com, teleyears, right? And um, it's a really cool thing because as you start practicing this fasting, intermittent fasting, the diet variation especially, um, that is going to uh, lengthen those telomeres and therefore lengthen your actual biological age, not your actual age. It, you know, hey, I'm 53, but your actual cellular age is a better way to put it. So, you know, that's really cool. But when we're looking at these studies, stem cells, and to bring this full circle, we know that stem cells are extending these telomeres. We know that stem cells are down-regulating inflammation, driving the healing. So stem cells come in and they cause all of the healing uh, in your body. And that can be your arteries, that can be um, your joints, that could be whatever it is, your heart, your liver, everything we need to live a long, healthy life. Stem cells are at that core. So how important is this? It's very important. You don't heal with one fast, right? You know, it's multiple fasts. This is a lifestyle. That's why we're building this group. We're teaching people a lifestyle. It's not just the fast, as you learn. This whole idea of stenomics is really building all the way up to the fast to maximize the stem cells. That's what we're doing. It's, yeah, autophagy is great. We're getting rid of the bad stuff. But thank God our body comes back and produces the stem cells. And that's what the anti-aging is about. And again, we don't even like the word anti-aging. It's living long, healthy, right? Longevity, if you will. You know, that's the key because we don't care to live longer. We want to live longer, healthy, and stem cells are at the core. We want to maximize autophagy, not just in this fast, but this is something that I do weekly. This is something that I teach my clients, you know, to do weekly, monthly, yearly. And all of this stuff is all about the stem cells. There you have it. Now, if you didn't see my video, today. This is really cool. 
If, you, if you're part of the group, you saw my video. If you didn't, go look for it. So I exercise today with these bands on, and I had them on my legs. They also make them for your arms. Uh, this is new technology um, that first originated out of Japan, I believe, but I'm going to be interviewing on Cellular Healing TV on my website, the scientists that came up with this. These are not launched quite yet. There was a different version that is not nearly as good as these. I can tell you that because I've used them both. Um, so I'm in a little experimental group here, but uh, this works, and it works by the same principle that diet variation works. It's the hormone optimization. This works by optimizing hormones that creates and that forces the body to adapt and then it raises up certain hormones. And whether you're an athlete or just looking to anti-age, the growth hormone, the neuroepinephrine effect from this is pretty remarkable. I've been reading some studies on it because I'm doing the interview. And there was a study of literally 12,000 people, old and young, who benefited more. So they had these guys doing heavy weight they had a group doing lightweight. Well, with these, which is super low intensity, I mean, literally 10 pound dumbbells, I can curl with the armbands on and it restricts the blood flow just perfectly that what happens is, is your body has to raise up an, a, an emergency response, raises up the growth hormone neuroepinephrine that I've been talking about. And your body thinks it did this amazing, huge, heavy workout, but you didn't. 10 pound dumbbells. I was just doing body squats today and it was like they were burning. My body thought I did this hard workout, but I didn't hardly do it at all. But here's the best part. The results are better than the guy doing the heavy weight workout, literally. See, it's not what you do in the gym, it's how your body responds later. And so they even use this to uh, help athletes come out of injury. Bodie Miller, one of the world's greatest skiers, used this method to actually get back from injury and skiing again. So a lot of the skiers here are, are in Park City, we have the center of excellence where all these amazing athletes are. This technology um, has been developed even further by the gentlemen, the scientists working with these athletes. But I think this is the perfect fasting thing because during fasting, if we exercise too much, too hard, we can take too much energy away from healing, right? And some people, uh, you know, you so metabolically not well <laughs> that you can't even exercise, right? It's different for everybody. So I like to say exercise can be absolutely beneficial during a fast, but too much is not good. This makes your body with very little energy, makes your body think it did this amazing workout, upregulates the growth hormone. That's exactly what we want to optimize our hormones during a fast. So anyways, that's what I did today. I'm going to do it again. Um, tomorrow or the next day, because you can actually do it uh, repetitively because you recover so fast. That's the key. Is I'm not traumatizing my muscles like a heavy workout, right? And then we wait for it to recover. We need days to recover. Well, your body thinks it did that, but it didn't. And it upregulates the same reaction as if I did break down my muscle. So therefore, you recover like that. It's another reason the athletes love them. They jump higher. Um, than just regular workouts. So when they measure in the studies, like their ability to jump, which is a really good measure of strength, I mean, all their parameters went up. And when you do this, I'm telling you, if you put them on your arms and you just do some simple push-ups, I mean, you fail. 10 pound dumbbells is all I did. And literally I went to failure. But again, the reaction is you build strength faster. So anyways, I'm testing this. They're not released yet, so it's not like you can get them yet. But after the interview, um, hopefully I'll be doing this. So pay attention. Watch out for that. Um, hopefully I have that interview within the next few weeks. But cool stuff. And autophagy, ultimately we're getting this ratio. So we know we're maximizing autophagy to maximize our stem cells. And that's living longer healthy. So all right, stay tuned. Watch Merrily's probably 45 minutes from now, or whatever it is at six. I'll see you tomorrow night with special guest again, Dr. Jason Fung. I can't wait to hear from him. So I'm sure he'll have some amazing things to tell us about where we are. Day four, man, tomorrow, come on. Maximum autophagy tomorrow. Your stem cells are starting to just go through the roof. Day four and day five. So congratulations, you made it this far. But tomorrow, man, it's the, the rubber hits the road. This is, this is why we're doing this. You know, tomorrow is the key. So sorry I had to do this early, but I have a webinar I have to do, so I better get to it. All right, guys. See you tomorrow with Jason.